Well, we're gonna get back on the boost buckle for a little bit. I'm gonna work on trying to get um, the turbo and this other cylinder head off. These other pistons look like crap. And I need to grab one of my engine stands because I want to put this on the engine stand and try and tear it apart. And we're going to take parts out of this, put it in the 4.8 and get the 4.8 prepped and ready to drop down in the truck because I need to have this thing running. Honestly, probably this week. I need to have it running this week. And as you can see, right there, it was starting to push the gasket or well, was pushing the gasket on both sides. This one actually was pushing it over here in between these two ports. You can see it really good on the cylinder head. Right there at the base, you can see it was pushing on all four of them. Only thing is with this side, there wasn't um, any broken uh, washers like on the other side. So I don't know what to make of that. But uh, I think I am just gonna clean these heads up and just throw them back on this thing. I'm gonna buy a better set of head gaskets I've never had problems with these head studs. I don't know if I'm gonna just buy another set and try another set and hope for the best. Let me get this stuff moved around, get the cherry picker out, and we'll get ready to start plucking this thing out. All right, so we got our China head studs. I think they're actually made in Taiwan. They're not Chinese. Um, so we got our head studs here. We'll get these out and uh, start putting them in the engine. We can start getting the heads put on. Torquing that down, we got the lifters and stuff in. And uh, as you can see, I got them cleaned up. I'd have to pull um, this valve and these valves out to clean them because they had this one had aluminum embedded. Now you can still see some here from where this piston on that motor got all marred up and uh, it chewed up some of the piston. But yeah, right there, you can see where it got a little bit of that piston nipped it there. And then obviously where the head gasket was blown. The see the head was clean-ish. Um, I went through and cleaned them, put them back together, and then vacuum checked them and they all pulled really good vacuum. So the valves were sealing up. Um, this particular head actually has cracks between all the seats. Um, you know, it ran when it came apart and I was beating the hell out of it then. They didn't fall out of it. So we're just gonna throw that back on here. But we are gonna put it back on the driver's side of the engine. That way, if something does happen, I can pull that one off really easy and replace it where this one's got the turbo and stuff on it. So that one's, that one, we're just gonna leave that one alone. But this is the head from that side and it didn't have any cracks in it that I could see. Um, but yeah, this one was nice and golden, no cracks. So that one's gonna go on the passenger side, but that one actually sealed up really good. So all I did was wash it and vacuum check it, make sure it's sealed up. And uh, didn't even pull the valve springs or nothing off of it. So it's just gonna go back in it. All right, so we got our BCR head gaskets on here. One thing's weird about these, they don't say front or nothing like that on them. So you just kind of got to follow this little tab here. It'd be like the uh, LSA, LS9 gaskets. Uh, this tab's to the, fore, to the front of the block. Um, but... Everything lines up. These are, like I said, the small bore gaskets. So they're set up for 3900 bore and this motor's 380, was it? It's 30 over. So it's gonna be like basically 3809, 3810 basically. Um, so we only got about 80 or 90 thousandths worth of ridge there, which I'm usually not a huge fan of running the LS9 gaskets on small bore stuff. You end up with just a big void around it. I'd rather have that ceiling surface of a normal bore size head gasket than say a big bore head gasket. But one thing weird about these Chinese head studs or Taiwanese head studs, the short, let me find one here, the uh, little short head, head stud in, this one up here, they're actually a little too long on this bottom side. Um, what did I do with them? Oh, here they are. If you compare them to these, which these were Speedmasters. Speedmaster one here has got the lube on it. But if you look at this shoulder here, if you line those shoulders up, it's a little bit longer. Whenever I would thread them into the block, 
you would see some of these threads here sticking out above the block and this is actually supposed to sit into the block um, and then the upper part of it's a little short here so I went ahead and used my Speedmaster ones these small ones and put those in here and then these I'll just throw in the box and never use those get this thing ready to button up and put back in the truck all right well we got that head torqued down and uh yeah, I'm a little leery about those head studs. That's fine. It'll be fine, right? Seven layer head gasket. That's why we did that. Um, roll it over. We'll get the other one bolted down. And then uh, I'll go ahead and start putting the push rods, rocker arms, and everything, getting all that torqued down and sealed up. Valve covers on and sealed up. So we're throwing the push rods back in, stock push rods. We're going to grab the uh, stock rockers back on, torque all this stuff down. And I uh, actually need to throw some lube on the tip of the push rod, like I did on the tip of the valve. And we'll throw these on, get these torqued down, seal up this cylinder head and valve cover on this side. So we got the motor set down in the truck. And uh, I ended up putting it in the truck with the turbo manifold on it. I thought it was gonna be easier. I don't know that it was. It was actually kind of, I think, more of a pain in the ass to do it that way. Um, but that's bolted on and I got this exhaust manifold set on it. I need to get underneath of it, put the torque converter bolts in it, and then uh, tighten up the bell housing bolts on the transmission. But uh, hopefully today, we can kind of get this thing buttoned up and hopefully get it fired up. We need to get it moved out of here because we have a project coming in, this thing. Um, you'll see this in a later video. Uh, it's a 1957 Chevy, it's already got a, LS in it and someone started to do a turbo kit but uh you couldn't close the hood so the car got brought over for me to basically refab the whole turbo kit wire the holly um plumb the fuel system and basically get the whole car running from start to finish um from what I know the engine's good and stuff but like I said we'll get into that in another video I realized I forgot something or I realized I've, I've forgot something about this engine basically um grabbing something out of the snow here got some needle bearings here or not really needle bearings but parts of a bearing this is an a37 bearing i cut apart and took the bearings out of it um a37 these actually are going to go down inside the dod towers on this block this is a fourth gen motor so i've got these dod towers with the holes in it and uh, I need to plug those. And a lot of people use these bearings or they use an A37 bearing, they cut it apart and then they put these in here. So what we'll do is, let me show you real quick. So you'll take these and you'll put them down in these towers like this. And then you'll just take a punch and punch it down until it's flat. And uh, you'll do it with these little dimples here facing up because the bearing itself, the roller is actually tapered. So that's the way you want to do it with the little dimples facing up. So I'll grab my punch and a hammer, knock those in, and I'll show you what they look like when they're installed. We got them all tapped in, flush, and we're good to go to put the valley cover and the gasket and the O-rings on. I'm going to go ahead and run the O-rings just because. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, put a new gasket on, slap this valley cover on, and we'll keep plugging along. I got new plugs in it, got the injectors cleaned. A couple of them are a little, uh, um, there's a little discrepancy in two of them. They actually float a little more than the rest of them. So I put those two on the rear banks. I'm gonna drain the E85 out of it real quick. I got three gallons of pump gas I'm gonna throw in the tank. We'll prime this thing up, double check for oil pressure to the turbo before we fire it up. And then uh, see if we can get this thing to light off. Let's see if I can get in here and reach it. Now that we got the starter hot as hell. I don't think it's spinning fast enough to get any oil pressure built up. Um, we might have to uh, hit her with a little carb clean. Now nah, piss on it. We'll just crank on a little bit more. Um, make sure I ain't got nothing coming out from underneath this thing. Nope, just, just a puddle of trans fluid back here. 
We don't need that where we're going. Get lucky. Still no oil. What if I put it on my lips? Crank on just a couple more times. If it doesn't work, then we'll just hit her and fire this old girl up with some fuel and And I think I got the fuel pump relay disconnected as well. Oh, there we go. We got some got some oil now. It ain't much, but it's enough. That ain't gonna work. I think I got the fuel pump relay unplugged. Uh, uh, uh. Yep, I sure do. Right there. This would be a sight, boy, if you all could see me climbing through the window of this truck right now while it's on the lift. And I'm falling. Oh boy. Oh gosh. Oh boy. Oh, I'm getting too old for this. I can tell you that right now. Oh gosh. Where's the leg at? Whew. How about you? Okay. All right. So, oh, stand by. All right. So, I guess what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna prime this a couple times and just see if I can pump, pump some fuel out of it. Oh, I don't have anything. Why is nothing working? Uh, my terminator's not turning on. That's not good. Everything's plugged in. I got nothing. What the heck? Well, I'm an idiot. So I, I went, uh, as you can see, I got power now, the key's on. I was back here wiggling the, the power wires and I thought, man, well, that's weird. I know I flipped the switch up. Well, when you flip the switch up, that's not the switch, that's just the, the cover. Then you have to actually flip the switch. I'm just going to sit here and do this a handful of times and see if I can pump a bunch of the fuel out. And uh, hopefully it's just, if there's any junk in it, it's just pushing it all past my injectors. But I'm going to do this a few times and then we'll throw some pump gas in it, try and fire this thing up. plugs I just put in it and uh, try it again. Ah, darn it. Why did I do that? I 
stupid. going to sound so this was a 5.3 before but now it's a 4.8 so the cam is actually going to sound a little bigger in a smaller motor than it obviously because it's it's smaller displacement cam is bigger in a 4.8 than it is in a 5.3 because obviously the displacement kind of chews up the cam or absorbs the cam I guess I should say um, one in, everything's good <sighs> Don't see anything underneath the truck. Oh! That's gonna do it for this video. The BK is alive again, thank goodness. That means I should be able to move this thing out of the garage under its own power once I get the radiator stuff put back in it. But uh, we've got projects coming. Winter time's gonna slow down as far as video goes because it's not gonna be as exciting because it's just build season. Um, not much track stuff, actually no track stuff. Um, but you never know, maybe we'll try and travel down south somewhere and you know, go to Texas or something, try and go racing at least once this winter. Um, but that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Keep following. We'll see you on the next one.